time. Okay, guys, so welcome. Penultimate monthly webinar this year. Got one more left in December. Um, Europe clocks changed last weekend. US clocks changed this weekend. Dubai clocks don't change at all. Uh, so moving into the winter, this this at the moment, this is 8 p.m. It'll be 9 p.m. for me for these webinars. So that's going to be interesting. So I want to go through a few uh, bits and bobs today, guys. We, we're actually launching Expat Teams next week, hopefully. Uh, we've started to get the Slingshot people migrated over, but there's a lot more going to be offered uh, in that as well. I'm going to go through a little bit of a tour, if you like. So there's a couple of ways to get into Expat Teams. Um, one is to be a, uh, a Slingshot subscriber. That way you get into the Slingshot team only. If you're a special edition Slingshot subscriber, you get to access Funded Trainer Rockstar, where there's going to be live sessions, uh, live training sessions and chat. Uh, Expat Vic, one of my uh, now past apprentices, is a brand ambassador. Uh, Vic will be running um, Automated Strategy Builders Ninja Trader team. He'll be running the Expat Stocks Predator, options trading, that sort of thing. Expat Frank will be running a Copper Club and also a German speaking club as well. And they will be uh, live trading sessions again. Uh, Expat Lou will be running the NASDAQ Nutters live trading room. Uh, and we will have pop-up live trading uh room with me there's no schedule on that it's when i can get in i'll just say right going live now and i'll go and trade okay um so there's um if you're not a slingshot subscriber or you're not a special edition slingshot subscriber to get hold of all of these multiple different trade rooms uh that happen most days uh, with all the chats it's $300 a year. That's all it is. And that's to cover our costs because this is quite expensive uh, to, do, to do this. But um, you'll see other ones in there. The tra that's my trading team. So that's the guys that are running all these uh, particular uh, trade rooms. Uh, that's where we meet um, the expert apprentices, past and present. That's where all the apprentices go. Um, and once they, they become apprentices, they get lifetime access to... Um, the expat teams as well. In fact, three of those teams are run by ex-apprentices, okay? And that's important for me so that other people are doing exactly what it says on the tin, not just me. So the good thing about teams is, for example, on the, on the Slingshot subscribers, uh, we can add um, playlists to the training, okay? We can add documents. So in there at the moment, the documents in there are, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a rules document and, and all that sort of thing. And also in the notes, uh, I can add notes. So this is why it's better, better than WhatsApp. Um, Discord is good, but it's free and we get a lot of people spamming. The only way you can get into Expert Teams is to be a Slingshot subscriber. <clears throat> an apprentice or an expat team subscriber. Nobody's going to come in there and pay and spam, okay? It's about support. It's about understanding. It's about asking questions. You know, common, common chart types, for time frames for slingshot here, all in here. And they'll be added to all the time. There's files in there as well. So when we do the live training, so there's a trading rules docs there. Look, there's that's the first doc that's in there for the trading rules uh, and all that sort of thing. So... There's, there's a lot more that we can do and that we can also then have um, all the recordings of any live training sessions uh, in there as well. So when the Funded Trader Rockstars actually do a live training uh, trading session, that will be recorded and it will be in there in the docs section. So uh, we had a, what, something called documents here and in there, whenever we do a live session, there is a recording of it, okay? 
and that will be in there uh, forever for people to learn from as well. So uh, it's taken quite a bit. And one of the th reasons why we've just done it for the Slingshot subscribers for now is to migrate and learn from uh, how we do that. Okay, Trevor, no problem. <laughs> yes, because this is the real world. So uh, there's a couple of funded trader rock stars right now that we run in trade rooms, uh, Tony and Frankie. And then hopefully Trevor in the new year will be coming on as well. Uh, these guys literally trade funded trader accounts. They use the slingshot and they are killing it. So these will be great trade rooms. Uh, Expert Lou will be concentrating just on the NASDAQ. That's why it's called NASDAQ Nutters. Frank will be running copper trading because he trades copper. Uh, and then Vic is an options expert, is also automated strategy builder expert as well. So he's been on the apprenticeship and he's really killing it with the automated strategy builders. So he'll be running that group as well. So it's, it's about getting that support, that live sessions with people that are using the software. So you can ask questions, you can uh, get that support, that mentorship that you need to help you uh, get better. Everybody wants to improve. So that's the Slingshot teams, the expert teams, and that will be um, going live next week. Somebody found it on the website, and it's not, it's very difficult to find and subscribe last night. So we are giving them access, but uh, it will go live next week. Somebody jumped the gun. Um, so that will go live next week. So what I want to do now is I'm going to do a couple of things. So before I go any on to anything, has anybody got any questions for me? Do they want to look at a specific indicator strategy? Um, so I can uh, answer your questions first. Instead of doing it at the end, I'm going to do it at the beginning. So use the chat box, please. And let me know if you have any questions. Or want me to go through something, whether it's a specific instrument on a specific... Um, thing. So, yeah, so again, what we can do with the, while we're waiting for questions with the expert teams, we, for example, all these the oil trades today that I was putting on and people were asking me questions and learning from them. Um, right at the beginning of the day, you know, I literally posted this chart and said, right, guys, look at the bias. Look at the fresh air between the spot resistance zones. We're only looking for longs, okay? And lo and behold, a long happened, okay? Uh, touching, 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 gone, then pull back. Type one by gone, and we can share those in there. And again, I mean, I actually said to people, I'm using the 34 EMA for trading stop at the moment for CL during that time of the day. So it's a, it's also it's all about learning as well. Uh, I was risk free then on that trade, um, and then obviously uh, John trading it short, uh, another trade short with Tony there as well on on oil, um, and then I. <laughs> I teased them a little bit because I was in a marketing meeting and I'm running the new, testing the new automated strategy builder for Slingshot. And that was what we would commonly call a monster trade. So 10 contracts, five taken off at 82.90. Uh, so that's after seven ticks to target two. Target three at $83. That's 17 ticks, another three contracts taken off. And then finally, the, the other two contracts were taken off at 83.14, so what we would call a pretty standard sort of trade, but that was automated, so to get into those really fast sort of moves. So sharing all this stuff in there is really important. Right, so Christine, slingshot, when a short after a signal, slingshot, when a short after a signal, in the other direction shows up. How do I get out? Okay, so I'm going to try and find an example. Uh, Christine, did you see an example today? Was it a specific instrument? So I can try and find it. That might uh, narrow it down a little bit. Um, uh, 
because one of the, I can see an example here, but again, this is um, whoops, what's going on here? Okay, so the type two cell never went through the entry, but you didn't get the confirmation um, from the bias depth heat map. So you don't you don't go for the cell. The type one buy, you read yellow and green. You don't take the trade. Okay, uh, you only take the trade when you get the confirmation. And that's the very, very important thing here is to get confirmations. It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality of trade. So forget this one. There was confirmation, but that was the automated strategy that was what went through. This trade here, you got fresh air, target one, target two, all a green go. Yeah. This buy here, type one, type two buy. This is a trade that I've shared on the um, teams. All six time frames agree, okay? Signal confirmation, yeah, that's it. You, If you don't get the confirmation, you haven't got fresh air, you don't take the signal. So this short signal here, we're almost all green on the bias. We just don't take it. That's the simple rules. Um, oh, oh, hang on. Let me try again then. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right. Can you see my mouse moving on the chart now? <laughs> uh, it's late. Okay. It's after 8 p.m. And I was at the golf course this morning at 7 a.m. I've played a full round of golf, come home, we've been working all day and had, had a two or three meetings as well and trading. So it's been a long day. So I'm going to go back to the one where we get the uh, two different signals or both together uh, here. <laughs> so we get a cell signal here, buy a step heat map, red, yellow, green, ignore it. We get a buy signal, red, yellow, green, ignore it. Only take the ones that have the confirmation, okay? Even this short signal here that didn't have the confirmation, we do talk about this in the teams a little bit more, but if, you're, if you've hit a big confluence of support of resistance zones in this case, which is the 60, 30, 15 and the native time frame, and you're starting to come down, it's almost like you're in a trend reversal state. So you will take those be, be very aggressive with your training stops and that's something we we're going to do in some of the live sessions with the slingshot people is to understand that um you know we've been up and up and up and up and then this has come up here it's tested that confluence of resistance zones it's going to go down it pushes down it pulls back we get a signal we this is the case where we don't get the confirmation but this reaction of that confluence of resistance zones is extremely strong. So we take those, we'll be very, very aggressive with our entries. We're not going to take the buy because we're not going to go into the resistance, but then we get another short, we take that short, okay? Now, all of a sudden, we're in no man's land. We're in the middle of the range between this resistance and that support. We've got no confluence. The, the momentum's gone from that resistance there, okay? The better trades are when we get here. So this one here, we get a type one buy signal at this point. Get type one buy signal there, and uh, we get six out of six. We go long, okay? And it, we got enough risk reward. We got target one, target two. There's target three just inside that resistance zone. What I say is just wait if you've got. Enough fresh air to target two, because a lot of people just trade to target two. Uh, you've got enough fresh air, you go. So signal, confirmation, fresh air, go, follow the rules. Um, same with this one here. Type one and a type two buyer took this. I got out too early. I took all my contracts off at target two and look how it went. Um, so that's where that goes. So hopefully, Christine, that makes sense. Uh, the the confirmation is very, very important.
That's right, Trevor. Yeah, it is. It is exactly that. No man's land. And it doesn't matter which instrument you are trading. You need to trade into fresh air and you need to understand the behavior uh, no matter what time frame. So we could be looking at um, let's just duplicate that into a new tab. We could go to uh, the Nasdaq Nutters. OK. And we go a thousand tick. Yeah. It'll take a time to. Uh, with the bars, we need to be around over 2,500 or uh, 2,005. 2,005. Click apply. I, I, I haven't followed NASDAQ today, so I'm not sure how that all works. Okay, so. And again, it's about the opportunities that arise here, even on the NASDAQ of the 1000. For me, the long trade was pretty good. We had fresh air and we got six out of six when we got the signal candle down here. Long trade, it was good. To be honest, when it hits uh, 60 minute zone like that, you need to get out, okay? Then because it's hit that 60 minute zone, it's come down, it's pulled back. You've got the type one sell. At the type one sell, you've got four out of six uh, red, but you've just hit resistance, okay? So it's coming back down. This way, we can say, well, four out of six is pretty good. We've just hit a 60-minute resistance zone. What has it done in the past? It's hit it, and it's come all the way down to hit there. Look at recent behavior. It's going to give you a big clue. And look what happens. Type 1 sell all the way down into that support zone. This really is important to understand. The, guard, the Guardian zones on the Ninja Trader platform, the logic is so complex, but it makes it really simple. You've got multiple time frame support and resistance zones that are automatic, that's put on your chart, and it shows you where the fresh air is. You trade into that fresh air, wait for those supports and those resistance to be held, get a great signal generator like the Slingshot, and you will succeed. You don't short in support. You don't go long to resistance. The next piece of the puzzle is signal confirmation. Get the confirmations from the buyer's depth heat map. So look at gold. I won't look at XAU, USD, FA because I don't have it because I trade gold futures. Okay, uh, but gold futures work exactly the same as well. So let me just bring up gold. Um, let me change that one to gold. Okay, I'm in a gold trade right now in a short on a different strategy. <laughs> so, so it's showing up on the uh, on the trade. I'll show you what it is. It's um, it's the automated range breakout strategy for what's called, what's called a continuation trade. Uh, so we had an initial trade into this resistance, didn't work out, got out of break even, comes back up, it goes up above the New York gold range, comes back down. And then once we start to hit towards the European range, uh, that turns red and we go short of the breakout. That's the trade that's in at the moment that you can see on that other chart, the range breakout trade. Um, okay, so again, with uh, here, you've got to be uh, what this is actually a good example. I want to show people. So, um, when you've got a really big, thick zone like this, and you're again, look at the behavior, it's moving within this zone, this higher time frame zone. You get a type three cell here. What was the catalyst for that? Okay, 
So we kept testing this. Let me just take 60 off. Yeah, so there's a 60 and a massive thick 30. So I'm going to take the 30 off, okay? You can see how, how wide that zone is. That's not relevant to the price action right now. The 60 is, so this means we've got confluence of 60, 15, and this Unirenko 135. We're not going to take the buy into that zone, even though we've got the confirmation from the buyer's depth heat map because we're not going to trade into trouble. When we find resistance to that confluence zone on, on um, of 60.15 and the native time frame 135, and it starts to come back down, we do print a pullback zone here, but it's a trend failure. This is a perfect example of a trend failure. So in reality, we go up, we pull back. The software is saying, hey, we could be looking for a buy here. Nah, we're going into resistance. We get a type three sell, which is a trend failure. We will not get confirmation on trend failure when it's just hit a big confluence zone like that. We take the short, and that is 1998.4, and the trading stock gets taken out of 1994.7. So that's about 40 ticks, okay? Um, $400 per one contract. So really great trade. And then we get another type two sell here. I don't think those were there at the time, these particular um, zones, because they actually printed when this one came to take up the, the bottom. So that was a good trade as well. Um, so, yeah, this, this gold trades in at the moment uh, with the range breakout on a totally different strategy. One of the things uh, that I talk about in my new book that will be launched very in December. Can you see there? Uh, there it is. Okay. That's the print proof right now. Um, talk about confluences uh, of using different strategies, um, so different indicators uh, and strategy indicators for different market conditions. And very, very important to, to be able to use that confluence trading strategy. More about that in December um, when the book is launched. But again, I'm use, I use different uh, types of strategies there. So, uh, any more questions on the slingshot or on gold FA? Let me just make sure I have actually. Uh, okay, that's good. We're all caught up. Yeah. See, if I was trading this manually now, I'm in a short on the range breakout. This is now pulling back into a pullback zone on the slingshot. I'm just going to keep an eye on this off, off screen because if this actually uh, gives me a good signal, it could be one to add contracts to there as well. Damien, could you add uh, answer somebody in Discord group who's purchased the um, the um, buy step heat map from with a special discount on the Facebook ads through the funnel? Uh, people are getting confused, uh, and he probably hasn't got access yet. So, um, can you let him know? Okay, so that's where we are with that. I want to bring. Um, I'm going to bring Bitcoin futures over. We've been working on this uh, for quite some time now with some really phenomenal trades. So Bitcoin futures is not for everybody. So to trade one contract, you need $37,500 in your account. Okay, so it's not for everybody. There are micro and nano Bitcoin futures. The volume isn't there yet, so the vol it's not really that tradable. But for those that can... Okay, in this data series here, strategy performance. Uh, you're not going to believe it, uh, but I'm going to put it on there. So from the 22nd of December, 
uh, October to today, 96 trades, $27,000 profit, trading five contracts, okay? Something I've been working on all year um, with Slingshot, so I've had a Slingshot app um, all year, really. Um, the, the idea with Bitcoin futures for me is that you're not actually, um, you're not exposing yourself to risk in crypto. What you're doing is trading a futures contract up or down. Uh, and Bitcoin is uh, Bitcoin futures follows Bitcoin price, so Bitcoin is led by human behavior. That's all. Okay, it has no use. Uh, it's got a great value, but it has no real use. It's purely just herd mentality, which is pure behavior, which works amazing with slingshots. Okay, because it's about those pullbacks and that behavior. You say, oh, I need to get out. No, I need to add again, and and really works very well. So I want to <clears throat> I want to share something with you. Uh, this is something I'm working on. I'm, I'm actually going to be probably opening a fund with this next year. Um, but I, I've been working on it all year. Um, I traded live with it for the last four months, and the um, results were phenomenal. Um, so it's something worth considering. Uh, moving forward, check out the nano Bitcoin futures. The problem is not the Bitcoin futures are being traded by institutional traders. How do I know? Still got friends in the game and and they're trading it. Yes, it's probably less than 0.5 of their portfolio, but there's enough volatility now for them to actually uh, and the volume to to trade it. So there is better results for this type of thing. And I know the funded traders uh, people don't have Bitcoin futures right now. Um, but I think if they get enough pressure from people, they will do, okay? Um, so just keep an eye on Bitcoin futures. Uh, I'm a, I am a big fan. I've been working on it all year, and I'm really, really, um, I'm amazed at the results, okay? So on a quarter million dollar account, $140,000 profit in four months, but you've got to be, able to optimize and understand <clears throat> the behavior. Uh, but again, let me just talk about a slingshot here. This is a prime example. We get along, we've got fresh air, okay? It tests again, it tests again. It finally fails. We get a slightly lower pivot than this pivot, comes back, type two cell, lots of fresh air, go down, target one, target two, target three, down, 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 down. okay? Really strong trade, great example, okay? And that's on Bitcoin futures. Let me just move that out of the way now. Right. I want to bring over... Right, you're going to have to bear with me because that's on my big screen, so it's small at this moment in time. Now I just need to increase the size. Okay. So, copper. Gold. One of the things that... Um, is very important when you're trading is not to rely on one specific strategy. It's great for when it works, but may only work two days a week <clears throat> because market conditions can change. And a lot of the times you're after confluences of different types of strategies all coming together to give you those particular signals. So um, this is just an example with gold, okay? What I want to show you is that by combining specific indicators, you can actually get some really good sort of com confidence in uh, specific moves. And we're going to talk about this more in, in December uh, when the book's released. It's all about confluences. So it's about the joining of together of different strategies to get to, to ensure the flow is strong in one direction. OK, so imagine a river starts off really small and it has lots of uh, there's confluences of tributaries all coming all, making it flow stronger and stronger until it is a dam. OK, 
okay, it doesn't flow any longer. Okay, uh, that that's a confluence work in the opposite direction. But with trading, if you're going to trade full time or you're going to trade for 90 minutes a day, every day, that's full time in my, in my mind. You need to understand that market conditions can change and market conditions can reset when you have uh, large economic data, which is a little bit of a miss or it's better than expected or you get the Fed, which is later. So market conditions might be working on slingshot on a certain time frame for the last two weeks. Then Fed comes out with something really different and it may reset that market type of condition and behavior, in which case then you're going to have to adjust slingshot or in reality, the best thing to do is have a number of indicators to, to be able to compensate for those changing market conditions, but also then give you um, the confidence to trade. Uh, and so my chart sets are all like this. So um, I'm just going to take off the roller coaster for a second. So it's just not as confusing. Uh, so in reality, what I'm looking for, whether it's oil, copper, gold, whatever it is, I'm looking for confluences to help me trade the directions. I always have the range breakout on there because that really does define the day. And we can see a lot of times, especially here in Europe, open look for, for copper this morning it was fantastic. We had a nice trade out here. And one of the things I like to do is just to show you, I'm going to put a vertical line on there. And I'm going to sink, sink it in the layout. So one of the things I always look for is I look for confluence of a different type of strategy. So the range breakout itself, we get the European Open. I know Frank, Frank trades this is in Germany. He's one of my apprentices, just finished the apprentice of course for this year. Um, we've got all six time frames in green, but not only that, just after then, we've got buy signals from the VWAP predator with all six time frames green. This is a great trade. Look what happens, understand the behavior. It pushes up and pulls down and tests support at the top of that range. This is not freaky stuff. This happens a lot, okay? Then we get the London open. So we get bullish into that London open, but then it runs out of juice because we get European data today. So understanding when data's coming out is very, very important. So now we're coming back through. There's no trades like I just showed you on gold that's kept come back through and everything's red. But look what happens here. We get sell signals on the VWAP Predator. All six time frames are red. We can take the short. Pushes down through below that range, starts to come back up again um, on, um, on the US Open. Okay. Uh, sorry, no, it's, uh, it's, what time frame is this? I'll use UEC plus one. So we start to pull back again, and now this is the trade I really like coming back through the London Open. Let's put another vertical line on there. Let's sink in the layout. Oh, look what happens. We haven't got any confluence from uh, the five-minute Heiken Ashi from, um, uh, from the expert algo. We've got great confluence from buy signals on the VWAP Predator at this point. So we've got, it's coming back through the ranges. All the ranges have turned green, six out of six there. We've got buy signals on the VWAP Predator, which is a totally different strategy that looks at VWAP, at volume. This is just pure breakout strategy defining the ranges. We go long outside of this range and we go up like this. We get into the midday, probably more data, comes back down again. And we, you know, at this moment in time, we're not going to short into this support of ranges. We see those opening ranges, find support, starts to come back through. We get the New York gold pit open. We get some volatility after that open for those longs. Uh, we then get the New York Stock Exchange open. Again, I'm going to put a vertical line right here. And I'm going to put that into the layout. And then, okay. So New York Stock Exchange open, 10 minutes defined. It's defined in green. We're not quite six out of six down there until the next candle. Look what happens on here. We get a buy signal on the VWAP Predator. This is a fantastic trade, okay? Um, 
I'm not going to talk about managing that trade, the manager or anything like that now. What I'm trying to show you is confirmations. I always start, I always have the range breakout because it defines the day on gold, copper, oil, indexes, you name it. European, London, New York gold, New York Stock Exchange open. And when you've got oil, you have the oil uh, pit open as well. It is extremely important to understand that um, that framework for the day and where those ranges are because they will come into play. Then you can trade out of the ranges, through the ranges, getting that confluence of signals from a totally different strategy. So, Keisha, this is a good point. Do you ever find that when using different strategies on the same instrument that a long and a short is entered on different charts which cancel each other out or one is closed more than another? Never mind. I got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah. So it's about confluence. It's about the flow, the direction uh, of the flow. Um, and the more confluences you've got with different strategies, the more likely it, it is to go in that particular direction. Using the manager is very important. One of the things I with, with the manager is not just so the manager's on day trading moderate right now. When you actually change that to aggressive, which you should be, um, when you're talking range breakouts, you can use the ribbon. But also be aware when we talk about behavior, <clears throat> I don't talk about candlestick patterns as such. All I see on this candle here is look at the size of the wick. It's rejected the highs on higher than average volume because that dots above it. This is a sign to be very tight on your stops. Okay, so just to update you on gold, uh, the automated trading strategies now make that risk free. Okay, uh, we are nearly three hundred dollars profit per one contract right there at the moment, uh, but it goes through a certain amount of ticks, and now that's automatically made that risk free. So risk free trade now on gold short while we are talking. So um, that's a sign of behaviour that can't be ignored. Then you see the next up candle is lower than average volume. And then we get a rejection of highs. So we get slightly higher highs, slightly higher lows. Again, I talk about this in the apprenticeship. Okay. It's about understanding the behavior, the precursor for those slightly higher highs, higher lows. And it's running out of juice and it's going to come back down again. Then we need to understand signals uh, for um, to trade this short, if you like, uh, if there are any. If there isn't, we just don't trade it. Okay. Let me just bring or oil's tanking as well right now. Let me just bring oil over. So here is a prime example of understanding uh, what's going off uh, overall. I should be on five minutes. Some, someone's been playing with my charts. Okay. Um, so the oil pit open um, at nine o'clock. We're not going to take the long because we don't get the full confirmation down here. But more importantly, at 10 o'clock, we had ISM data. Look at oil go now. Wow. OK, um, so what what we look for is that the opening range has failed. We've got data coming up. Um, you know, we've been bullish pretty much all morning uh, since the London Open. That was a great long, by the way. Longs. Uh, during the European morning on oil just lately are phenomenal, okay? Really, really strong. So this is the London Open here. Uh, just there, let's sync that in the layout, okay? Now, it doesn't take the brains of a rocket scientist to use confluences in this context. We have the opening range. We have a five and a six star buy signal on the five minute on the roller coaster. We have buy signals galore on the VWAP Predator. We have a buy signal on the roller coaster. Four, four different confluences, four different strategies. You're saying buy oil, okay? So again, uh, 
it's very important to understand that if you can do this seriously and do it for a living, like I do, like I did, um, it's about having your architecture. So I've got five big 27 inch monitors here. I've got a, a 55 inch monitor on the wall vertically down. That's where these charts are on there. Uh, and it's about being able to trade uh, constantly using different strategies uh, and those confluences together to give you really good, strong uh, trading opportunities, continual trading opportunities. Because if we just had the range breakout today, we wouldn't have traded oil short. In reality, we had a six star sell at this point here. We had a roller coaster even earlier. If I just put that sick, that roller coaster signal on there. <clears throat> so this roller coaster signal here at this point, I think this is on the wrong setting. It's on swing trading. No wonder it's not showing properly. I've been playing with the charts today. Sorry. Um, that is day trading. Okay. So this roller coaster signal came at this point here, just as we're coming back down through this range. So the range isn't red, but it's given up the ghost. We are at 10 o'clock when we had big data coming out. It's coming back down through the range. We've got a roller coaster saying, go short. Okay. We understand from this behavior that the range didn't hold to go up to the upside. It's coming down. We've just had big data. It's pushing oil down. We've got a signal. We go short. We are still in this trade now with uh, oil because the trading stop for the roller coaster is still printing at this point now. So very, very strong trade. So <clears throat> you need to understand also, it's now coming through the London Open. So in theory, we could go short oil or add more contracts to this point at 81.28, okay? that In that point, we'd put a stock market order on. 81.28 would be the short order. And we we put a short order on, okay? <clears throat> but you, you got Fed coming up, so just be careful, yeah? So Bitcoin setting Samuel 135. <clears throat> for the roller coaster, Unirenko 135. It may be too fast at some parts of the day. So you may need to go up to 2610. So you need to back test that. Okay. <clears throat> so does, does that make sense? Anybody got questions on um confluences, confluence trading strategy? It's something I really want to concentrate on from December and next year because it's what I talk about a lot in my new book. And I'm going to keep plugging it because it's been a labor of love and I'm really happy with everything. Uh, lots of editing processes, lots of proofreaders have gone through it. Uh, now it's just in the design phase to get, uh, get, get it happy for me. So next year we're going to uh, concentrate a lot on confluences and confluence trading strategy i may even come to the us and do a little bit of tour of some, some one day uh, workshops on confluence um, strategies so uh, it's a long way to go because um, the us from here is a long way um, but um, i think if i can do like a four city um tour i think that will work out very very well so oil 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 <laughs> everybody wants to come to dubai there's my oil chart Why can't I find my oil chart? Hang on a sec, guys. Yes, FTXS, GC, G. Ah, I think it's because I changed it, didn't I? Um, I think it's because I changed it. Uh, 
I've got to find it again. Bear with me. Got it. DL. Okay, so it's just gone through a range. Um, <clears throat> Again, being sensible on these, if you take the 30 minute away here, because it's really thick and wide, the short <clears throat> rarely happened here at this point, uh, Trevor, on the 135 for CL. The reason I took the 30 minute off is because it's just too wide. Look at the pivots in these price actions. In reality, it is very, very wide. I think the 15 is more, more prevalent. prevalent. And you've got to be sensible when you're using these sort of things. So uh, one of the things you would really look at is you've missed the trade for now, but there is a pullback happening. If that pullback registers a potential trade, then that's the trade when you'd get in and, and sort of do that. OK, um, but that was a monster trade down here. Type one, type two sell. <clears throat> so two, out, two signals for the with trend have been met. That trade entry was at 82.10. It's now at 81.30, okay? It did hit 81.20, so nearly 100 ticks on that one move on, the, on there. So timing's everything. And one of the things we're building is the automated strategy builder, so you um, don't miss trades like this. Um, if that pullback was enough, there would be, uh, but to be honest, that's gone a long way. It needs to be a deeper pullback for us to get uh, a signal at that point there. Uh, but I did go in um, on that range breakout that I did on the other chart. I put an order on while we were talking. <laughs> Yes, this these zones here that you're talking about are very, very strong. So even if there's zones now that have just appeared to go long, we're not going to take them because we haven't got the uh, confirmation from um, from there. You've also got to be aware when Fed, when is Fed coming out? When uh, Let me quick look. So what we got... 1400 EST, so in an hour or so. So it's very, very dangerous to trade leading up to that. Okay, so just be aware uh, that you need to understand this calendar. The ISM manufacturing was the catalyst for those big trades that we had earlier. Okay, very, very strong catalyst. You, you know, before the market opened, I had some really great trades. Um, then I was in meetings. I had one good CL trade while I was in a meeting. Uh, then I've left it alone. And in reality, leading into Fed now, you've got to be very careful not to trade. Wait for the reaction. Look for the trades afterwards. <laughs> Institutional traders take the train away from the station. They stoke the fire. They get that train moving away from the station. Retail traders, if you're smart, wait for the train to keep moving from the station, then jump on board. Okay, get off before it gets to the last stop. No one's hurt. Okay, you will get hurt if you try to start moving that train away from the station, especially when it comes to big events like this. Okay. What time we got? What time we got? 10 minutes left, guys. And ask your questions. Come on. That's why we call them NASDAQ nutters. <laughs> Retail traders jump on the tracks in front of the train, NQ train. Absolutely. You cannot second guess a very high, highly volatile um, thing like that. One thing I'm testing in the moment is a slightly higher time frame, by the way, on Slingshot with 6E. I, I love trading the euro, obviously very pegged with the US dollar and uh, works very, very well. Um, as you can see here, all those red EMA lines mean it's a profitable trade, okay? Um, 
I mean, look, this long here was phenomenal. Short coming back down here, little pullback, short. It really, really is strong, but it's not a strategy uh, that I'm going to share at the moment until I understand how it reacts around support resistance zones and what the best time frame it is. And that's the whole point of this teams, the slingshot teams is, um, you know, I'll, I'll be doing live sessions, just testing. There'll be Tony and Frank, Frankie running live sessions using the slingshot to in front of trading account. Whether, and then they'll be doing copy trading in there as well with all that. And then you're going to get Frank that's just going to trade <laughs> copper because he's learned from me. He was a total newbie at the end at the beginning of this year. Never seen a trading chart before in his life. English isn't his first language. He now trades copper. He trades three days a week for about 60 minutes a day and makes 3,000 euros a week. That's his target. Once he's finished, if he does that on a Monday, he stops trading for the rest of the week. Great guy. He's learned and he understands the rules. And then you've got people like Vic, who's had my software for probably seven or eight years now, uh, been on the apprenticeship, really understands Stocks Predator. He understands um, all the different um, indicators and strategies because he's been on the apprenticeship uh, and really does understand the automated strategy builders as well, which we're going to go and re-release again in December. We've just stopped them for now. And then you've got uh, Louis, uh, Louise, uh, Lou, who's been on my apprenticeship and just trades NASDAQ. That's what he does. He does, does that every day. He uses the indicators. He uses that confluence strategy very well. Uh, and he will be running live trade rooms uh, and chats as well and support and things like that. So with uh, Slingshot, if you're day trading, Unirenko is probably one of the best, unless you are um, trading NASDAQ or one of the indexes. So let me just um, pull one of the indexes off here now. Uh, thank you. So something like NQ can be traded on 4, 10, 20 Unirenko but also on a thousand tick chart as well. So it's about finding the groove, Christine. So one of the things I tell my apprentices is get married to one instrument, okay? You understand the behavior of that one instrument reasonably quickly, okay? And you can trade it very well. If you're trying to trade four, five, six, it's like having, in your case, six husbands. You're not going to cope and understand the behavior of six husbands. You can understand the behavior of one just, okay, especially if it's somebody like me, um, but you understand how that works. So if you're going to, you, you've got slingshot, and the, the best thing to do is stick to one instrument. Look at it on different time frames, especially when it, if you become advanced next year and you start to trade with more than one strategy and you're using confluence strategy, you understand the best time frames for each different type of strategy and you combine them together. So um, don't pick NASDAQ. Everybody tries NASDAQ and it's like being married to a serial killer with bipolar. You will get killed, okay? Uh, it takes a very special person to trade NASDAQ consistently. Um, choose oil, choose gold, choose the S. Just choose one and start sim trading with it understanding its behavior what's the best time frames for example es is better on uh, if we change it to es now thousand ticks too big for es um we you know we look at 500 ticks or something like that um and understand that behavior understand what's going off i mean look, again these zones are very very fat zones so let's take the 60 let's take the 30 off that's more like it that's where our frame is on this 500 tick uh, for now, okay? So we're not gonna take all of these. We, again, the type three cell here, when we've been testing that, that's the trade. Then we get a type one cell anyway, when we get a pullback. So 500 ticks is very good in there. Um, so I would pick the instrument. Again, join the teams. Uh, I know you're, only, you're new to Slingshot, but once you get on the Slingshot teams, you can start asking these questions. There's documents being built in there to help you give you a good start for the instrument that you're trading on what type of chart type. 
uh, and time frame. And then um, when we go to the teams, we have um, channels in there for Bitcoin futures, oil, ES, copper, and NASDAQ right now. Uh, if there's something that's not on that list and you want to trade it like natural gas or something like that, or I know Vic trades um, a lot with uh, soybean futures, and that is pretty hot stuff right now. Uh, you, under, you, you know, we can add that. We can help you and try and find the best type of time frames for you. Uh, but in the end of the day, I can't trade for you because it costs you way too much money. Okay. Uh, the best thing for you to do is take your time, understand, learn, and pick one instrument and stick with that instrument. It's like getting married. Once you're married, you've got to stick to it. It's going to be there's going to be tough times and there's going to be great times. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you you know you work at it and you understand the behaviour and you will be successful. You're very welcome, Christine. Yeah, so again, it's it, you can't trade off a laptop, okay? And I, I know some of you are probably in this webinar right now and you trade off a laptop. I'm sorry, I can't do it, yeah? I've got an office here. I've got an office in Spain. It, I've even got the same big desk from Ikea in both offices. I've got the similar chair. I've got the same layout of screens. I've got a computer here. I've got a big monitor on the wall. It's my architecture and it's the way I work. It's the multiple time frames that I've got on that big screen with those trading view ones that you see there that gives me the overview and understand the behavior, what's going off on that confluence type strategy. I've got all my ninja trader charts on different time frames and blah, blah, blah here, automated strategy builders, everything going off. Uh, but it's a flow of work. You can't do that on a laptop. Not if you're going to take it seriously. You need a PC. Uh, and you need multiple monitors. Uh, some people have got big, big monitors, 43 inch monitors, two of them, that's fine. Um, I've got 527s and 155. Uh, why have I got five? Because I've tried to cut down by one. I may go back to it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've, I've got one of those fold uh, phones. Uh, and this is just while I'm out, I can quickly look on the uh, training view charts and stuff. But even then, I don't know whether you can see that or not. That's quite big. Um, but even that, I would never trade off it. All I would do is just look and, um, you know, see if I'm out, for example, because the time zone difference uh, and, you know, I've got a, an open or data. I want to see what the reaction is, really, because I always like to see what's going off in the market um, and you know this this is sort of nasdaq uh their sort of thing uh with the vwap predator on that phone there but again it's not you can't trade off it it just gives you a little bit of an idea of what's happening in the markets that's correct yeah I'm, my wife hates it when we're out i'm always i'm going to quick look at the market so i know in my mind what's 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 about to happen, uh, what's coming up, and I just have a quick look at the reaction and try, because it's always good to understand the behavior. Very, very important to understand that behavior. Anybody got any further questions before I finish the day? Because it's 9 p.m. here, and uh, I've been at it since 7 a.m. this morning. Ooh, gold came up there. Thank you, Trevor. Yes, it's been. Oh, what it been? Yeah, it's been recorded. It'll be up in the next day or so. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Frank. John, thank you. Peter, Keisha, Paul, Samuel, Christine. Wilbur, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, I will see you uh, next month, but I will see more of you 
if when we launch the expat teams uh, in live sessions quite regularly with not just me, but other traders. So hopefully see you all there soon. Cheers, everybody.